Hey, today I'm going to talk about drum replacing. By saying drum replacing, I mean that we've recorded drums either in the studio or a live show, for example, and we're not satisfied with one of the drum sounds, or it's too dirty to use. It could be kick, snare, or any other. So I wish to replace it with one of my own samples to make it clear and neat. For example, I have here a pre-recorded live show. And I'm about to play only the drums and you'll be able to hear that it's very dirty and you can hear all instruments leaking in the back. This is only the drums. All other tracks are muted and you can still hear them in the back. So, I want to replace the kick for example because it's too dirty and lacks some power and I want to change its sound. In order to do this, I'll use two Max for Live devices. The first is pre-made, which is the envelope follower which we have here and will detect the different hits. Every time there is a kick playing, you'll notice that the envelope follower gets a signal. We'll use this signal to trigger MIDI notes, which will play our own samples. So, let's get started. First, let's create a new MIDI track and find some drum sounds. I'll look for drum sounds and I like the big punchy one and I'll look for it in the browser. And let's see, let's hear it. It sounds just fine. Let's use this one. Let's try out some of the drum sounds. Sounds just fine. Our next stage is to create a new max effect. So I'll choose new max MIDI effect and drag it to our channel. I'll open the editor and the first thing is changing the view in the patcher inspector and enable open in presentation which will change the editor's view making it easier to work. So the first thing we want to do is to create MIDI notes. So I'll write make notes. Make note receive three things. The first is pitch, the second one is velocity and the third is duration which is time and it sends out velocity and pitch. In order to set these values I'll create a dial. I'll use lives dial which I'm familiar with and I'll duplicate it three times because I have three values and I'll connect them to my make note. I'll put everything in place and I'll connect the outlet of the dials into the inlets of the make note and make everything spacious and comfortable to work. Notice that each one of the dials should send proper values. So I'll change the prototype of the dials. For instance, the first one should be pitch. The second one I don't have to change and the third one I'll change to time. So I'll look for it and here we go. Only two things left now. The first is create a button that will trigger the notes. Notice that I'm using Live's devices in Macs because it's mappable and user-friendly. Now I'll connect the outlet of the button to the dial's inlet and here we go. We're almost done. The last thing we need to do is actually send the notes out of the patch. I'll write Note Out. Note Out receives three things. Pitch which we have over here, velocity, which we have over here, and the last one is MIDI channel, which we don't have to change, so I'll just leave it out. We're generally done, but I want to make it user-friendly. I'll open Max's sidebar and start changing things under the inspector tab. I want the button to turn blue every time it gets a signal. I'll change its name so when mapping it to other things it will be easier to follow. 
In the first DAL, I'll change its color and I'll change its display style from vertical to panel, which is cooler in my taste. I'll also change its name and I'll also make sure the initial enable is on, which will set the default state of the dial whenever we load the effect. So I'll set it to number 33, which will be a better starting point when using a drum rack or a sampler. And quickly I'll just change the other dials Set the values. If you know what you're doing, it could be very quick. I want the velocity to start at 100. Change the last one. Set the initial millisecond time, 300, change the name, and we're done. Now, I'll just select the things I want to see in my presentation, and select Add to Presentation. And now, switching to Presentation mode, I'll just organize things in the right place. And also, I'll add a comment uh, for the trigger so nobody will forget. And last thing is to actually save your progress, save it to an actual effect. My drum rep. And you'll be able to notice that my default values are set, the ones we chose earlier. We can close it. And here we go. This is my new effect. You can see it's working. And last thing is just to map our new trigger to our envelope follower from earlier. I pressed map, got back to my trigger and if we'll check the envelope follower again, they're friends. Keep in mind that the better the signal we'll have from the envelope follower, the better. Also, I can make it clean by using a gate, which I'm not using at this time, but I'll add some gain to make sure we have a clear signal. Let's listen to the results. This is the trigger, and if we listen to both tracks, you'll be able to see that there is a delay between them, but by using the delay track, you'll be able to fix it perfectly. Here we go. Let's hear our results. Mute the original channel. You can hear the difference. I hope that showed you how easy it is to find creative solutions using Max without knowing much. Keep the music going, hope you like it, enjoy. <laughs>